Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers and in today's episode we're going to be looking at the little tiny um, Champion Premier mower that's in really bad shape. I have got it running, I've done a little carburetor clean on it very quickly and um, that's now up and running. I've got to fully service it but I want to make sure the engine ran before I continue so it's going to be a rub down paint job and what have you so that'd be quite good. Also just want to show you um, what else I've been up to because I've been, been doing sort of quite a bit off camera because um, now's a busy time of year for me so I need to get on and just sort of get down and get dirty quite quickly so let's have a quick little look at what else I've been up to and then we'll crack on with this little tiny um, rusty lawnmower. Okay, so the first thing I've actually completed now is the, um, the HRX476. That's now all up and running. I'll just show you quickly. that's all now up and running the drive now is, is as strong as anything I just rerouted the belt slightly differently over a back back pulley so I think I actually installed the belt incorrectly the rotor clutch all works it's fully serviced so that's all now good to go the next one is this little uh, I say little it's big it's a 22 inch I think or 21 inch um, snapper lawnmower this has now had a partial service to get it running properly I sort the fuel leak out um, the drive all works and the gears will now work as well just with lubrication with WD-40 so I'll just fire that one up So that's all up and running as it should be. Just wants a bit of cosmetic stuff. I'm just going to get some Amorite um, red paint on this. I'm going to sand it all down and then just Amorite paint this one up. Um, so that should all be up and together. It's actually a nice little mower actually. Um, quite quite big grass bag and what have you. So I'm quite happy with that. As I say, the, the gearing system didn't work on it initially, but I soaked it overnight with some WD-40 and it's now working as it should do. So well happy. I've also been working on this SP470 um, ES mower. It's had a partial service again, new air filter. Um, I cleaned the carburetor as well and also did a repair on the cable. I saw another subscribe, another YouTube um, person do a cable fix on a um, on the lawnmower. So I purchased some of the bits. I was just getting a bit closer. And by using these little tiny clips, which you squeeze on, you're able to actually um, repair the cable instead of purchasing all new cables which are 15 to 20 pound each and that now works probably better if, if not when originally manufactured so that all now is up and working so that saved a, a few quid and they're about six pound for about 50 you just put them through make sure you get the right size put them through crimp them together and it's a, a really good repair I bought some more cable that's coming um, I had a bit of an old cable which I used, which is it's plenty good enough, it's under not, not a lot of strain, but uh, it's certainly done the job. I've also managed to do the electric start on this, I've charged the battery up, so now that's all working, so I'll just go a quick fire, all the drive works, it just wants a full service now, it's had a partial, so I'll give it about 10 pumps, and I'll try and start it off the key straight away. So 
much for that. I also had this one coming on a part exchange the other day, um, which is a 474. Um, didn't find a lot wrong with it initially. Um, just want a bit of TLC in tightening up and a bit of love and care. I've painted the top of the pull cord cover. Um, that's all now up and running as well, so I'm happy with that. I've got to do a gasket and diaphragm on that one. Again, that's playing up again, so I don't know whether it's that new type, new style of um, gasket diaphragms I've got that are failing. I'm not quite sure yet, but we'll find out. So here's the little rusted job. Let me just get it out very quickly. This is what I'm going to be working on today. It needs a, it needs a full sand. The rust, the, the rust is all superficial. This on my deck, it was just what's bringing back. I have just started it very, very gently, but uh, all the paint is just flaking off of it. So I'm going to take the engine off, um, take it all apart, and then sand this one down. It won't be like a, a, a full restoration. It's just going to be a sand down back to bare metal, an undercoat, and either amorite or um, spray paint with a lacquer, one or the other, but we'll, we'll see. But this engine, it fired, um, but when I got it actually running, it was revving its head off, and it was actually due to the governor arm was stuck on the other side, so I'll just fire it up for you now. a new spark plug in it it wants uh, a bit of love and attention but it's all running um, it was smoke, very smoky at first it was overfilled with oil as well so that'll be today's project hopefully the engine is actually going to be good the spark plug is not too old um, if not it may be the coil maybe the coil is playing a bit if, if this is rusted there so the coil is actually rusty as well also have this one I picked up day before yesterday I think um, sort of a quantum it's got a cable failure on it but the engine does run I have cleaned the carburetor on this one as well just try and fire it for you I've got it in bits at the moment all running it just wants a bit, and again it wants a bit more love and attention on it I need to get a new cable for the for a dead man's handle um, but it's a unique cable so I need to find and resource that bit for that right so this is where I'm gonna start on I've got a nice big tub just down to my right which is where I'm gonna put all the bits and pieces of this project so I don't, so I don't lose anything I need to remove first of all the handle mechanism which would be the dead man's handle the throttle assembly and the drive cable once they've come off I can dis um, engage the pull cord under these four bolts here and that'll be the handle out the way so I'll get it done now you don't need me to see that really so only four bolts either side here unclip um, these two cables underneath and unclip the um, the drive cable or could unclip it from uh, from the other side so it, it comes unattached but let me get that done and then I'll come back okay so that's the handles now removed I've got to take this cable off in a bit. Just going to punch this hole out, or this bar out of here, and that removes the uh, the back flap as well. That's that flap removed. I want to remove the engine next, so I'm going to tip the lawnmower up on its side and um, take the blade off and then um, loosen the uh, engine bolts to remove the engine. I want to tip up all the way because it is all, all in this engine. So, tip it up, best part of three quarters, somewhere there. And now I can remove the belt and the uh, 
blade and remove the um, HT lead before I do that. And let me just get my impact. So that's the blade removed, or the blade undone at least. That can now come off a little bit of therapy. I'll remove the, the belt. Just by pushing the belt over and off the boss. Like so. Boss can come off. And there's a keyway in there as well. Always in the tub. We've got a screw in here to take out. Should just be one screw, hopefully. So all the little tiny bits like the keyway and the little screw I'm gonna put in a separate tub, which will go inside a big tub so I don't lose them. You can keep an eye on them. That one comes off. Got a bird's nest in here or something. That's it. So the deck itself is just rusty, but it, it is it is complete. There's no big holes in it, nothing like that, so it's just been neglected. I'm gonna blow us off an air compressor shortly. The belt can now come off. Off the top, there's a belt. I can now start to remove the engine. Just wanna soak these in WD-40 first before I do anything. Okay, I'll tell you, having this impact gun has changed my life, I reckon in regards to how I used to struggle before. Within two minutes, I've um, managed to loosen that, those nuts off and that whole engine now comes off. Just try and retrieve that last bolt if I can get it. There it is. It makes such a difference having the right tools. Such a difference. So that engine can be stored upright, out of the way. Um, it's a perfect good running engine. Well, say so perfectly good, it runs. It wants a bit of bit of work, but uh, it's better than what it was. So next I'm gonna remove this front wheel assembly. I'll try and take it all off in one go if I can. What we've got. So we've got an axle, one end. Let's whip the old wheels off. Screwdriver. And it's the ideal thing of having having a pot nearby just to put all your stuff that way you don't lose any bits. It's all in one bucket. That's got a little bearing on there, that's all in good condition. So there's actually a spring this side, which I'm assuming just tensions that lot actually. It's a little tiny tension spring, so all of that can go back on in a minute. But I want to remove there's a split pin just here over the far side of the height adjustment. I want to remove that, that's what I was trying to get into originally. So, yeah, all that was is a little tiny circlip, it just pushes off, goes on the front side of the axle. So that's all that was. And now your height adjustment should separate. And then your front axle all, all comes apart. I'm just gonna put that wheel back on. Just one, one less piece I'm gonna worry about. I'm trying to find the bits a bit later on. Next, I want to look at removing the back axle, and again, it's going to be some little tiny eight mil bolts that hold the axle together. 
I dare say. Looks like about an 8mm. Yeah, it is. About to start to loosen it up anyway. So you got to be careful, really, because I don't want to shear anything off. Anything that shears off here, it's a game over project, so. Tip back anymore. Okay, so a quick little tip, just figured it out myself. So made hard work, hard work of that. Haven't quite finished it yet though. Throw that screwdriver away, adjust the height adjustment, and that undoes. So we live and learn. That's what it's all about. Sitting there struggling. It just dawned on me that there's no way they'd mass produce these and have someone sat there with an 8mm spanner. So that's now loose there. That will now come off this end. I've just got to disconnect the cable. And there's a little tiny nut on the back of here as well. It's got to come off the adjustment nut. That's got to come off and I can remove this, this back gearbox. Right, so that's the drive cable disconnected and the rear axle removed. Now I can turn the body back over again and remove the actual drive cable itself. It should probably come from this way. I've got to remove this little tiny rubber bung. Will allow the, the cable then to come out gently because they're quite perishable once they've got a bit of age to them. There it goes. And there's the drive cable now gone. Cool. Right, just want to get my air blaster out. Give us a quick blast off first before I start to repair it. I want to cut all around these stickers so they stay on. If they come off, they come off. That's what it is. I can't really odds that. But I can get down and uh, get dirty and get sanding. Okay, so the main stuff I want off, I want to keep is this one, which has come off. So I'll get some spray glue for that. That's cool. This one here is just a check, a check oil one, which is not essential. It may lift. May just tear. Let's see. Come on. Yeah, that's come as well. So that's cool. So I'll just get some, some spray um, glue, as I say, and I can be put back on. The ones on the front are absolutely fantastic, and no problem. So all I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna hit, it, hit this with a wire brush. Hit it with a wire brush, a uh, sander, sanding paper. Get a good bash of a hammer, knock all the rust out of it, and um, start to bring it up to a standard where I can start to treat this uh, this body. So that's had the first blast off, off the top. That's already looking so much better already. Just gonna get some um, cleansing wipes just to take most of the excess off. Blow dust it off first before I get it damp. And I can concentrate on the underside. So the underside is just as bad. As I say, it's not gone all the way through. It's just literally just cosmetic flaking that's come off and grass. So let me just tidy this area up just here. Okay, and that's the underside now done. Got to sweep it out, clean it out. That's all going back to bare metal. 
and there's not one hole in this deck at all which is fat well apart from that on there and um, this one here and that on there um so that's all back as it should be this is now looking much better it's got to clean up a bit more um and that'd be ready for uh rust treatment and then got to mask the labels up and then uh undercoat top coat and then lacquer and then we'll go from there okay so that's now had a quick wipe off and uh it's now been brought right back so that's plenty good enough what i need now i could just whack a uh, um an undercoat on here then top coat and a lacquer and that is already more than what you get in the uk with your standard lawnmower but what i'm going to do i've got some uh, metal paint here which you can add directly to rust um i'm not adding directly to rust so i have to take most of it off so i'm going to paint the underside first get that done and then once I've done, when I've done that, I've got some rust treatment stuff to put onto here once that bottom side is dry. So just going to get on and paint this uh, bottom side now, get that painted, and then uh, I'll come back. Right, so that's the um, bottom done, and it all looks rather cool, nice and black. It's had a good liberal coat all over. So I'm going to turn it, turn it over now, because there's a few um, places where... It's uh, got a few runs on it, which I want to take off because I don't want to affect the paintwork later on. Not that the paintwork's going to be A1, but it's going to be so much better than what it already is. Just want to turn it over. Very careful, I'll put it on site really if I can. Just to try and prop that up, possibly. I'll put it on that lip there, it should be okay. And then run it on the back somewhere. Just touch off the ground, off that, off that top there. That's better. That's better. And all I'm going to do now, literally, just go round, just where there's runs, where I've gone through the holes, just knock them off. I don't know runs when we go to when we go to spray it later on. Oh yeah, spray it later. If I was just going to amorite paint it. I wouldn't be too worried. I'm actually going to spray this with, with some spray cans. I don't have an air compressor um, spray set up. So that's all pretty good. Right, happy with that. I'll just go and get my rust treatment and I can rust treat this top. Right, and there's all the um, deck all now been treated and I've been using the same stuff that a good friend of mine uh, uses. Roy's a boy, he uses this stuff here, which is um, rust off. So that's when I treated, let it go off, and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've got that, that little body out there in the sunshine. That's now just drying off. Um, I'm not quite sure how long it needs to cure after read the bottle, but we've got absolute brilliant sunshine today, so I don't think it'll take long out there. Once it's all cured off, I'll give it a little rub down quickly with just a very, very soft um, scouring pad or something on that line, just to knock off any lumps and bumps, and then we'll have it back in ready for a spray. In between that, all I'm going to do is just going to touch this up with some Amorite, um, sand it all off, just so the axles are ni nice and free running. The front axle actually is really good anyway, it doesn't need doing much to get a bit of the sand down. I should give a blade a sharpen and what have you, and then we'll be ready to bring the base in. And that's the axles all done now. All I'm going to do now is just very carefully, what well, I should have done beforehand, is not knock some of this off with just a dry brush, just give us some of this, this grass debris. And then just got to wait for that um, that body to dry. It doesn't look too bad at the moment, so we've got, we've got brilliant sunshine today, so it shouldn't take long out there. And then we can move on to the next step. Okay, so that's had nearly two hours now, and it's dry to a touch. It's not even tacky. I want to get some masking tape now and just mask up these stickers. I'm showing two I've got to mark up because I want to keep these as original as possible when I go to put the undercoat on. So I'll just get them marked up. Uh, sorry, masked up and then uh, we'll move on to the next stage. So all I'm doing literally is just going to put masking tape on very very loosely, rub my finger down the edge of a sticker so you can see where all the grooves are, then with a knife, a, a hobby knife, just literally get the hobby knife and run it alongside. This is where you want to pay attention to detail, so when you, you spray it up, it should look fantastic. Yeah. 
a little shield here. If, you, if I've just nicked it there, you can go back over it with another bit of tape in a minute just to touch it up. So I'll get the rest of this cut out and then we'll move on. Okay, and there's all the labels now all masked up. Okay, that's now done, and that's the reason for doing this. It's just literally because this has got the original paint on it. So you just want to put a bit of a key on this, just rough it up ever so slightly, just so it will take, um, take the undercoat. But the undercoat pretty much sticks to anything anyway, so I'm not overly concerned. And the undercoat I'm using is just what you get out of a normal car, um, car shop, you know, accessory shop. I'll give us a shake and we'll start just to put the top layer on. Just important to make sure that you're in a well ventilated room and you've also got um, protection on. I'm standing right next to us to some double side doors here and I've got fantastic ventilation. So, right, I'll just give this can a quick shake and then uh, we'll make a start. Okay, and that's now had the first um, coat of primer. I need to get out of the because it's very, very fumy, fumy in here, so I need to get out because uh, this won't be doing good for my health. So let me just dry it off for about, for about an hour or so, and then I'll come back. Okay, so that's now had about half hour, 45 minutes. I had a quick sandwich, and it's now perfectly dry to touch. I'm just now going to apply the second coat, and that'll be the final second coat for the undercoat. I'll just put a mask on. I'm going to give it a go. Quick shake of the old can. Okay, so that's had another half hour or so, and it's completely dry to the touch. So now I'm gonna put on this um, uh, gloss spray paint, the gloss black. I'll get a good shake first, and I'll just apply a uh, primary coat to it, and then I'll come back and apply, I'll show you how to apply the secondary coat. Okay, so that's now had its primary coat, and I haven't gone mad with it. This coat is literally just to get the gloss to bond to the undercoat, so, a very light coat is best in my opinion I'm not a professional um, a very light coat at first is best just so you can get it to bond once it's bonded and then gone hard you can then go a bit heavy with the next coat but never go over the same the same lead over and over again so you just get run so that now wants to sit there for a good little while if I may even hang it up outside I've got some hooks just transport it outside put it in the sunshine and the wind will dry up twice as fast so I'll go and do it now, and then when it's ready for the second coat, um, you can come back and join me. Okay, so it's just having a bit of a sunbathe out in the sunshine. What a lovely breeze today, so that's really, really helping. And it looks already 10 times better in my opinion. So it's not a professional paint job, it's just a, a quick knock back, and um, just to try and bring the appearance up a bit better. You know, and it's it's a million miles away from where, from where it was. If you were a Simmons mower originally, um, you certainly wouldn't have purchased it. Um, it would have probably ended up down with tip because people think it's, just, it's, it's well past its sell by, but just goes to prove there's life in the old girl yet. So that's now had a good half hour out in the sun and it's absolutely bone dry. There's not even any tacky bits on it at all. So that's ready to go. So I'm gonna give it a second coat. I'm hoping two coats should do this. 
If not, it'd be three, but uh, as long as I'm careful, we should get away with, with just two. So I'll just apply it now, put my mask on, and we'll uh, get that applied now. Okay, so I think that'll do for the final coat. What I'm gonna do, a bit there, is gonna put this outside in the sun now, and purely, because the sunlight is different, it will show any imperfections up with regards to the paint job. So once it's out in the sunshine, we'll have another look at it, and if there's any bits of gray still hanging out, I can uh, pick that up and run that back in. Okay, so here it is now, bathing in the sun. This won't take long to dry at all and it's already looking 10 times better. I had it to touch up in places. As I said, the sunlight does reveal little tiny spots I've missed. But now, that's all gleaming as it should do. So I'll let that dry for another half hour or so, and then we can start to think about putting uh, the lacquer on it. But I'm sure you can agree, it's uh, looking so much better already. Right, so now that's had about 45 minutes to an hour give or take and it's completely bone dry it's not wet at all in any areas that's done well out in the sunshine so all I want to do is get my my little hobby knife and all I'm going to do is just now going to start to remove these little stickers the mask and tape I had very gently and it'll start to bring this lawnmower back To how it was before. That's that one there. That looks cool. My little bit of glue on this bottom corner. Oh, that's no, not too bad. The uh, lacquer should hold most of it. Take this one back. Can't even 
see the sticker up there is uh, just let you slide on that one corner very gently that's it there so that looks loads better already that looks really cool so the sticker that actually came off it has actually got quite a bit of stick on it it's quite sticky so I'm just going to try and reattach that now <coughs> up the top see if it'll take and if it does take then the lacquer will hold it once it once it films a sheen so that's good yeah that's got it the other one I think is going to be US I don't think I'm going to get it on there What's it say? Caution, check all before use. Uh, when starting a Honda Champion engine for the first time, move throttle control forward. See instructions for subsequent instructions. So that one I'm going to leave off. But that sticker's now gone on there as well, so that looks quite cool. And it is glistening in the old shed lights. I just want to put you up in the air a bit. You get a bit of a better view on it. So that's that. What I'm now going to do, I'm now going to prepare and get it ready for some clear lacquer. I've got some clear acrylic lacquer. Um, and this will have one or two coats of lacquer on here as well. And this will just seal everything in and give it a, a really good finish. So I'm just going to do this lacquering now and then um, I'll come back. Okay, so that's now had its first, first layer of lacquer. I will be putting a second one on. But that's really now picked it up. Really, really, really happy with it now. Absolutely glistening, which is good. <clears throat> I could have probably, in hindsight, just done a bit more with regards to the sanding down in places just here, and maybe running just here at the top. But as I say, this is this is just going to be a recovered job. This lawnmower was destined for only one place in the condition it was in. But as you can see now, all over, looks really, really nice. Really happy with it. The paint's really reacted well to the lacquer, which is good to see. So I'm just going to let that now dry for a further half an hour or so. I don't want to rush the lacquer process, because that's where it's going to be going to be looking its best. So I want to give that another, another half hour or so just to eat in. I'll come back and check it, and then um, if need be, put a second coat back on. The sticker's taken quite well. Now it's got a fingerprint on there, it's lovely. Let's run over that quick. That's it. So yeah, I'll come back in half hour or so and we'll see how it's looking then. There's a nice breeze coming in the shed. I might just open that side window up a touch more just to get a better breeze in here. Um, then we'll go from there. Really hard to believe that this lawnmower originally looked like that. <clears throat> I mean, you certainly wouldn't have bought that. And now look at it. Absolutely fantastic. So that's had about 20 minutes on it. Give or take. It's still tacky just in certain areas. So I'm going to leave that another 20 minutes at least. Just to, just to completely dry right off. Right, so that's had a further 20 minutes, half hour. And that's now all all dry. I don't want to touch it too much, but just want to make sure I'm not hitting no wet spots. It's actually taking my fingerprint straight off. So that's good. Right, I'll give it its second and final coat of um, lacquer.
Okay, and I think that'll do it. So I'm going to call that um, call that a vid because um, I want to let, now let that cure overnight, um, so it's ready for tomorrow for reassembly or for the next for the next time I'm out. Just wants to fit in there. It doesn't seem to have taken just there. May just be the light. Just run a bit in there quickly. That's it, happy. Um, so, yeah, I'll call that a vid, and then um, the next video you'll see will be part two of this one, and this will be putting this lawnmower all back together again. Having a look at the engine, sharpening the blade up, all that sort of good stuff. So, my little Lily's turned up today. Hello, Lily. What? You show, you show Uncle Mick Mick. Sorry, Nana, you trying to get out of the way? Yeah. Sorry, Nana. That's it. What are you doing then? This is my little niece, Lily. She's going around to play. Where's Ellie? At school. At school. Righto. Do you want to give me a hand to fix the lawnmower? Do you want to help? No? You'd rather play with dollies? Yeah. Yeah, creep. Righto, there's little Lily bum. What have you been doing today then? Shopping? What, with Mummy? Yeah. yeah. Where's Mummy now then? With, with Ellie? Yeah. Okay, cool. Right, yeah. She's a girl of very, very few words, that one. Okay, so thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Mixed Mowers. This is part one. Um, I hope you look forward to part two. This lawnmower was in terrible shape, um, really rusty, but uh, with a little bit of effort, we managed to bring this lawnmower back. So I'll let that now cure overnight. We're not due no low temperatures, so that'd be good and hopefully tomorrow or the next day maybe over the weekend actually i'll get another video out which would be the reassemble of the honda engine and all the bits and pieces to go on top of it so thank you very much i'm still waiting for the bits to come in for the 200 subscriber giveaway if they haven't arrived yet they should be here any day so as soon as they come me and riley for you will do another little video just to show you what's going on but thank you very much for joining me and i hope to catch you all again on the next one until next time take it easy Do you feel the